Hey there, it's Wade McMaster here from creatorimpact.com. In today's video, I'm going to be walking through basically the process of creating a logo using the Brand Crowd service. Uh, Brand Crowd is basically just a website you can go to, and uh, it's basically a logo creation tool. The idea is they have like some symbols and uh, sort of pre existing generic designs that you can touch up. And the idea is you can search for logo designs down here or even browse go through and um, yeah, pick something there. But uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, obviously, if you want to check this out, um, I'm going to pop a link below, but I'm going to walk through the search. Uh, so basically, I'm going to type in my a business name and um, just sort of have a bit of a go that way. So uh, basically, I'll start off, I'm going to say, what do we say? I'm going to say um, Art Studio 44 or something like that. Let's just do Art Studio 44, make logos now. Now, it looks like it actually selects keywords and gives you some options based off that. So as you can see here, we've got some paintbrush and a, a sort of like a building. We've got this here. We get some basic things to start off with. We can go through and find one we like, and then you can further customize it using, they've got like this visual customizer. And you can see we've got up to 300 pages here. So um, there's a lot, of, lot to go through. Now, what I might even do, I might even do a search for say, uh, Digital logo styles will go icon and text fonts. Uh, we'll leave that open. Okay, let's go create logos and see what we get. All right, so now things are a little bit different. We've got a few different options here, and um, to be honest, they're sort of not really. Maybe we'll go back to adding in that brush. So we'll go back here. We'll go uh, brush. If something with a brush in it. Okay, so now we've got a few different logos. Um, this is looking a bit more artistic. Not <laughs> not my personal choice, but we've got a lot of like brushes as in like, uh, you know, painting your house type brushes. Not really artistic. So uh, let's just see. You know what? This is a pretty cool little thing uh, logo. Why don't we start having to play with that and see what we can do with it. All right. Now you can put in your email here and save your progress. Uh, just for this video, I'm not going to worry about that right now. All right, so you, you get in here and you've got these bits and pieces you can edit. So maybe I don't like the way that's sort of written there. So maybe I'll say go Art Studio. And uh, with the 44, I'm pretty sure I can, uh, from memory, I haven't played with this a lot. I am having a bit of a go. So I'm going to go Add Text. Here we go, Tagline. I'm go, you know learn the art of creativity or some weird uh, sort of line like that art studio learn the art of creativity add text so let's try top in here 44 because we're going to go with our 44 name and maybe we make that yeah pretty big who knows all right so we're playing around with that a little bit now our little emblem here actually has a few different colors we can play with. Now these bits with the white in them, I'm guessing are the bits in the middle. And they've got like some, some gradients there and we've got some purple. But let's say I want to go for a different color type. Let's say I want to get some black in there. So I'm going to take this one, I'm going to go black, take the text, color, and go black. So when I click on the text, I've got the option here uh, to obviously I can change my font here. I've got the text option here, and if I click on this, various areas are basically adapt through there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and go for like a grayscale and a green, just for uh, no particular reason, just to see what kind of effect I can get. So you've got gray, and here we have, oh, yeah, we have some gradients down here. So why don't we say go with, And uh, once again, we've got this other pink. Go up that green again. And then at the end, yep, we'll put that one to a green as well. Although that first green now looks a little bit thicker, but you know what, maybe we'll half, instead of having three colors, we'll have two main colors. So we'll go here, make this one like a dark gray. This yellow could be a slightly lighter gray. And then we've got our, uh, this one here maybe needs to be darker again. Let's just play with that until we're happy with it. All right, that is pretty cool. So, put that there. And of course, this one here, we'll get that green in there again. 
And then of course we're going to go to our 44, and we're going to pick our little green there. Now you can add colors. So let's say we want to do something custom here. I click on this color and there's a new color up here I can add. So I can actually go through till I get like a bit of a, something that's a little bit of gray, a little bit of green there. And we've got a little Art Studio 44 so far. Okay, so having a bit more of a play with that, uh, I'm not a big fan of having those two grays so close to each other. So I'm going to try to find a slightly darker gray. And this is by no means uh, supposed to be a great logo that I'm putting together right now, but it's just an example of what you can achieve. So now we've got our, our logo looking a certain way. We're sort of pretty happy with it so far. With the layout, we can change the way things are this way. But to be honest, it's um, glad that reset button's there because all it's doing is moving some objects around and we can do that ourselves. If I want to, I can even, I believe I can rotate this. So if I, I can resize it, let's see if we've got a few options here. I'm sort of learning this a bit as we go to see what we can do. Layout, background. Let's see we've got. Ah, oh yes, grabbing that there, we can rotate it. So we can go one way. So let's say we like that slightly 45 degree sort of thing right there. Now this text, I'm not 100% on that text. So by clicking on that text, I get this text option here. I could choose a different font. We've got a few. It's sort of auto scrolling, which is a little, a little bit annoying. But once you get used to it, so this would be if you wanted something really blocky. Doesn't really suit the style we're going for, though. But you see, you've got quite the selection of fonts here to play with. So obviously we can spend a lot of time going through here to find something. We don't want to spend too much time here because I'm sure you're probably going to get pretty bored of the video if I do. Um, oh, we're not going to go with that. This is one thing that is a little bit funny is it does tend to jump around a little bit, which is a little bit funny. But let's say uh, a bit too much. Let's just stick with... Art Studio 44, Norwester. So let's go Norwester again. Okay, not the best font. Definitely not the best font, but it'll do. So in this one here, maybe we'll go for something a little bit more relaxed. We'll go for like a... I believe I saw Pacifico in here before. Let's just go with that. Learn the art of creativity. Like I said, not the best logo, but it's... Yeah, it's there. Now, we're not just limited to what we see on the screen here. Like I said, I haven't I've got extensive experience with this because I tend to use uh, programs like other vector programs to design logos in. But we can change the background. So if we wanted to, maybe we could change that to like a dark gray and maybe make this text white. Maybe we make the brush white then. So we'll go with the blackies. We'll go white and maybe we'll make this that same green. And come think it, maybe we'll make the background black altogether. So let's just go background black. So you can see we've got a slightly different looking logo again. Not a good logo necessarily, but you can see just how easy it is. You grab up here to rotate, you can resize. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So now shapes, we can add shapes into the mix. If I go to add shape, you can add in little bad shapes and things like that to sort of help uh, yeah, create a more unique look for your logo. So maybe I add these two little arrows in here. At the moment, it's a bit of a pink color. I want to make that a gray, so it's very subtle. So maybe I'll pop this here. Now, how do I, what I need to do is actually get this object behind the actual uh, logo. I'm not exactly sure how or where to do that, but I'm sure there's a way of doing it here somewhere. Layout, background, logo. But you sort of get the idea. I'm not exactly sure how you can get this object to go behind the other object. Um, I'm sure that somewhere there's a bit of, oh, here we are, layer. Bring center back. 
And now our arrows are in the back. We pop our brush on there on that nice 45, maybe in line with that arrow. And our little logo is starting to come together. Now I've just held down shift then to test this out and I can select both objects and scale them both together. So that's also pretty handy. Art Studio 44, maybe I want to, whoops, undo. It's good that they have the undo and redo there. Uh, sometimes things are a little difficult to select in this, but that's all right. For a tool, it's pretty cheap really, consider for what you get, it's not bad. Oh, that angle's a bit extreme, so now we'll leave that the way it is. All right, so we've got our logo starting to come together a little bit. Maybe we're gonna add another shape in there. So let's say we're gonna go a circle this time. Select that shape. Maybe this time I want this to go around the 44. So maybe it's Art Studio 44. And I'm gonna make this a bit more of a gray, or maybe this green. And I'm gonna go layer, send it back. I'm going to move that so it's not quite competing with the O on Studio too much. All right, so let's say we've got ourselves a nice little logo there. We'll center it with the X. Let's select all of that. And thanks to Brand Crowd, we now have our new logo ready to go. If I scroll down, you can see what the original logo looked like and where we've been able to take it. Now, like I said, it's just a basic tool, but it is pretty cool what you can do with it, some of the things. Um, obviously, I prefer personally to do things from scratch, but the whole idea is maybe you don't. So um, this could be something worth checking out if you don't necessarily want to do a complete logo from scratch, but just something to help you uh, do what you need to do. So um, basically the next step, we're going to download this logo. Now, this isn't a free service. You can build here for free if you want to. There's nothing necessarily stopping you from, I guess, screenshotting this or something. But I thought you want to get a proper download version. Go to download here. Um, okay, no thanks. It looks like in order to download it, it's going up there. And I do have to put my email address in there. So let's just go info at creatorimpact.com and let's just submit that. Here we go, right, so we've got our logo here. And of course, they're gonna hold on to this, which is because they have my email address. They're probably gonna send me another email to say, you know, hey, do you wanna download your logo? So this is basically what you're looking at. This is what you're paying for when you pay your $25 uh, per month. You get access to the logo, obviously. Um, you download your PNG and JPEG files, vector files. So if you do get any professional printing done, PDF, EPS is good, SVG can be good for your website. You can download transparent backgrounds. You can create multiple variations, which is definitely good. Make a whole bunch of edits on your logo. Download as much as you want, you know, all that kind of stuff. But if you go for the, uh, the standard logo pack, um, somehow, oh yeah, $45. So you can pay $25 a month ongoing, or you can just pay a $45 one-off fee, take your files, and pretty much just go for it from there. Um, now, I'm not necessarily going to do this because uh, it's just a video to show you exactly how you can, what you can do with this. Um, because once you've got the files, it's, um, you know, you put them on your website. You can send them to your printer if you're getting business cards done up. You've got all those options there. But this is just a cool little tool that uh, if you're looking to get a logo made, that's the way to do it. Uh, I definitely recommend getting a PDF or EPS because if you download a file here and it's just not big enough, Usually, if they're, this should be a vector file, being a vector file, you can scale that to any size you want in another tool. So, yeah, I hope you found that useful. Now, um, you can see here they've got a few other ways you can use your logo. Uh, they've got a few other protect your logo, so you can buy this exclusive option, which takes the intellectual rights. Um, so, the logo will be removed from the store, which would be the paintbrush, I'm guessing. You can pay online and uh, yeah, so pretty cool. You can get a cheap logo, which is very generic, or you can actually pay to have that artwork removed. So that's a pretty cool option. A bit more expensive, but if you're really gung-ho on it, you can do that too. So I hope you found that video useful. I hope you uh, yeah, found that interesting as well. If you want to check out Brand Crowd, don't forget to check out the link in the description. Uh, also, I'll pop it up on the screen here. Now, uh, it's just a cool tool. I haven't actually bought a logo from these guys. I will preface that. I have mucked around with this tool a little bit. I think the tool itself 
is very useful for people who, you know, people who just don't have the expertise to get a copy of Photoshop or something full on. So it is a nice, simple alternative for you to check out. So, um, yeah, if that's you, check out Brown Crowd. Have a bit of a play. You don't have to pay to play. You just have to pay to download. So, anyway, um, if you like the video, please give it a like. If you want to see more things like this, please consider subscribing. And if you have any, anything else you want me to check out, leave a comment below, and uh, we'll keep the discussion moving from there. All right. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.